Hello, I'm Firefighter Brooks of Arvindale Fire Department. Every October we do Fire Prevention Week and this October we're focusing specifically on kitchen safety. Let's take a few minutes and go over some lessons. Never put water on a grease fire. Instead, cover the pan with a damp towel and this will smother it. Always call 911 and never go back inside until firefighters tell you it's safe to do so. Always clean up spills. And don't leave food cooking on the stove unattended. Remember, kitchen safety is everyone's responsibility. I'm Firefighter Brooks. See you later. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Barrington with the Arbonne Fire Department. You already know my friend Sparky. Here at this station, we're going to show you and give you a tour of the truck that we use on calls every day. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is the engineer's position. The engineer sits in the front seat of the truck. They're the person that drives to the call. But also, other than just driving to the call, they're the one that pumps the fire engine, the one that gets the water through the fire hoses so the firefighters can fight fire. Across from the driver in the front seat, the senior firefighter who sit, sits there. He is in charge of that truck and the personnel on that truck. In the back seat, here in the back of the engine, is where the firefighter sits. Here in the back of the truck where the firefighter sits, you can see that his air pack is built into the seat. This is so on the way to the call he can get ready, but still wear his seat belt and for safety. And then once he arrives on scene, he can eject the, seat, the pack from the seat and be ready to fight fire. Now that we're back out of the truck, we can see what we call the pump panel. So that person that drives the truck that I talked about earlier, this is where he's going to be working at during the fire. So like I was saying, he's the one that pumps the truck and gets the water to flow out of the hoses. Well, this is where that happens at. This truck holds 750 gallons of water inside the truck. So imagine a gallon of milk in your fridge. It's pretty big, right? This truck could fit 750 of those inside. Pretty cool, right? So at home, whenever you need water, what do you do? You go to the faucet and turn the faucet on and water comes out. Well, this truck is really similar, but instead of turning the faucet, what we do is we pull a line which allows water to flow out of the truck into a hose and into the fire so the firefighters can fight. The next thing we're going to talk about is some of the tools that we use on the fire ground. How many of you guys like to play hide and go seek? Well I know I do and so does Sparky. Well also the fire likes to play hide and go seek with us as firefighters. So what happens is sometimes we'll go into a house and the fire will hide itself in between the walls or up above the ceiling. So we use tools like this, which is called a New York hook. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to take it and poke a hole in either the ceiling or part of the wall and pull that little section down so we can locate that fire behind there and put it out. All right, the next tool we're gonna talk about is our hydraulic extrication tools. So sometimes when cars get in accidents, they get crunched up and sometimes the doors don't work right or the people are stuck inside. So we use some specialty tools to be able to remove them from the car and get them to the hospital. So I'm sure you guys um, have used scissors at some point doing art projects or something like that. Well, we have some scissors of our own. The only difference is our scissors, thank you Sparky for that, our scissors are quite a bit bigger. And the other difference is they can cut through a lot more. Actually, these scissors, if we wanted to, we could cut all the way through this truck, cut it right in half, because these can cut through metal, wood, plastic, anything that we need to get through so we can get inside of vehicles and get family members and patients out of the car. All right, the next tool that we're gonna talk about is the PPV fan, or positive pressure ventilation fan. And what we use this for is once we go to a fire and the house is full of smoke, after we get that fire out, we want to exhaust or push out all that smoke out the back of the house so it's not staying inside and people are breathing it in. So we use this fan and once we turn it on, it pushes a ton of air, almost like a little mini tornado, pushes a ton of air into the house and pushes that smoke out so the people can live in there and breathe and not be harmed by that smoke. Next tool that we're going to move to is some more traditional tools that people think of when they think of firefighters. And that's going to be our flat-headed axe and our pig-headed axe. And so what we use these for is really what we call forcible entry. I'm sure whenever your family goes on vacation or leaves to go out to dinner, what do you do to your door? You lock that door, right? Or when you go to sleep at night, you lock the front door? Well, we don't have keys to everyone's house. 
So if you're inside of your house and the house catches on fire and you can't get out and we need to get to you to help you outside and save your life, we'll use tools like that to either break down the door or break the lock open so we can push the door open and get inside and save people. As we continue down, we're going to talk about some powered tools that we use. So this is a chainsaw that's got a special guard on it and we use that to cut in roofs and to make access into the ceiling of, of different houses or properties so we can access where the fire is or where there's a smoke stored up that we want to get that smoke out like we were talking about with the fan. Well also we have a demolition, demolition saw. So this saw looks pretty cool, right? So this is actually a diamond tip blade and what that allows us to do is this tool allows us to cut through concrete, wood, metal, pretty much anything we want to cut through we can crank this saw up and get to work and it'll cut through anything. So even the concrete floor that I'm standing on, if I needed to get through it, I could do it with that tool. That's going to be the end of the truck tour. From the bottom of mine and Sparky's heart, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And I hope everyone has a great rest of the day.